Today on Indiana Motoring, we're heading to French Lick for the Concorde d'Elegance. It's a car show celebrating the very finest in automotive achievement. We'll get up close and personal with some classic cars, look under the hoods, and take a few out for a spin. So come along, because we are going to ride in style on Indiana Motoring. We're at the historic and beautiful West Baden Springs Hotel, part of the French Lake Resorts in southern Indiana. We're here to see some beautiful cars, but it's hard to not also be wowed by the surroundings. To know and love this place is to appreciate the history. The history is what it's all about. The history is so fascinating. Just the West Baden Springs Hotel in itself. It's, it's had so many lives. It was a World War I Army hospital. It was a, a Jesuit seminary. Uh, along with being the eighth wonder of the world at the time it was built. Well, the West Baden Springs Hotel is a National Historic Landmark, and the reason it came to be here is because of the mineral springs that were plentiful in this valley at the turn of the 20th century. The first hotel that stood here burnt to the ground, and this structure replaced it in 1902. They built it in 277 days, um, and until we started constructing the modern sports domes in the 50s, it was the largest clear span dome in the world. French Lick is the perfect setting for the Concours d'Elegance, or the Concours as many call it. The French phrase translates to competition of elegance and can be traced back to the 17th century when well-to-do aristocrats paraded their ornate horse-drawn carriages through Parisian parks. These classic car competitions are held all over the globe and are frequented by people who are extremely passionate about their cars. Concours is a fancy name for a car show. What we bring in is a lot of the classics like Duesenberg's, Delahaye's, big, the classic Cadillacs, the Cords, the Stutzes. Those are classic cars, and, and people like seeing those because they're the nice big cars, you know, that back in the day were the luxurious cars that people rode around in, and so it's, it's kind of special. You don't see those at a regular car show. The Concorde d'Elegance attracts rare and historic cars from across the country. The weekend event here in French Lick includes driving tours, a lecture series, 15 classes of competition motor vehicles, hundreds of beautiful, vintage, classic, and historic cars, and thousands of car enthusiasts. There's so many perfect cars here today, it's unbelievable. There are so many cars to choose from. I, uh, it's just an awesome show. You know, this is a uh a venue you get to see a lot of things and at, that you don't see at museums because you can get up close and personal, talk to the owners, uh, glean a lot of information that uh, you never knew about certain automobiles. This year's show features Shelby American, Shelby Cobra, GTs, Corvettes, and other high-performance muscle cars. It also features historic Auburn, Cord, and Duesenberg cars, luxury cars that were made right here in Indiana. The first major event of the Concorde d'Elegance at French Lick is the Saturday morning driving tour. In the wee hours of the morning, the brick boulevard leading up to the West Baden Springs Hotel fills with an interesting and impressive collection of cars. The driving tour will head out to visit two impressive car collections. I'm going to see if I can hitch a ride. This is Jackie, a 1972 Jaguar V12. And this is owner Carolyn, who's under from day one. Well, we're going to take a little ride to the first destination. The two destinations for the Saturday driving tour are the father-son collections of Clem Longy and Joey Longy. Their collection includes more than 100 show-quality cars that some say rivals that of Jay Leno. So Carolyn, uh, what exactly are we riding in? We're riding, this is a V12, it's a 272 BHP with four carburetors. It will get up and move. It's a very smooth riding, easy uh, riding car and it drives beautifully. It's got, it's got everything you need. It's got factory air, uh, a purist that likes to speed, probably wouldn't like the fact it is automatic. I love it. I guess I'm a lazy driver, maybe that's why. <laughs> <laughs> I like the cold air and I like where I don't have to shift. <laughs> I got it in 1972, it was brand new. So I've had it since it came off the showroom floor. The joke is, it's been driven by a little old lady because I've had it 
since it was new and uh, the car was brand new and so we've both aged together. I think sometimes it's aged better than I have, but, but it's a fun car to drive. I still love it. it uh, when I drive it, it brings back a lot of good memories. After an hour drive through beautiful countryside, we reach Clem Longy's collection of classic cars. Clem has more than 60 rare, vintage, and pre-World War II cars, all stored inside a climate-controlled building. He keeps his cars in running order and in mint condition. One of Clem's favorites is a 1920 Essex called the Bullet Hole Special. The car crossed the country six times without ever breaking down. After serving in the Army, Clem discovered his love of older cars and began collecting vehicles in 1978. In addition to restoring the cars, Clem enjoys driving them and sharing them with fellow car enthusiasts. After the driving tour, a lunch, and a brief respite, the next item on our agenda is a series of lectures from, from very prominent figures in the automotive industry. Most people don't know they made the Hummers in, in, in Mishawaka, and then they made this vehicle called the MV1, but they stopped that production, I think, was early this year. Dennis Horvath is a self-described genuine car nut. He's been studying Indiana's automotive history for years and authored three books on the subject. My favorite car would have to be a Studebaker Avant. It was the honorary pace car for the 1963 500. It wasn't the pace car, but they brought it down from, from uh, South Bend. And that was the first time I saw it in the flesh at the Speedway. I, you know, I was born and raised near the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, so here's this gold Studebaker Avant. And it, the styling was knocked your socks off then, and the styling is still quite recognized today as a, as a styling leader, so it would have to be the Studebaker Avani. If I were to have a dream car in my garage, that's what it would be. <laughs> Donald Davidson is an author, historian, and expert on the Indy Motor Speedway. The autom automobile industry began in Indianapolis at, uh, probably around 1900, 1901, and the, the joke is that uh, uh, automobile racing began as soon as there was a second automobile, but uh, um, certainly by um, early 1900s there was competition. Uh, they, they, they raced at the Indiana State Fairgrounds, and uh, much of the early racing was the automobile manufacturers trying to show the public how good their cars were. And it didn't, when it began, it really wasn't a sport of drivers. That came along a little bit later. But um, Indiana just embraced it, and uh, there were tracks before the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, and then dozens and dozens and dozens after the Indianapolis Speedway. Hans Kellogg's documentary, Legacies of Perfection, was nominated for six regional Emmy Awards. Kellogg is a professor at Ball State University and produced the documentary with 13 of his students. And we actually had three generations of individuals. So uh, Jack Randinelli was actually one of the gentlemen that had started the ACD Festival. He was my initial contact and was great for being able to, con to communicate and have us get to know the different owners. He had a grandson that was there and it was the gentleman, the, the young boy that was so excited about the different cars and his uh, daughter was also part of the 
whole process. So we actually had three generations of individuals there that were a part of that. And that's really where the term legacy came from. Legacy of perfection of the automobiles themselves, but also the people that were trying to keep this, this uh, group of automobiles alive and running. After all the driving in history, it's time to change gears. Now we're gonna celebrate in style under the world famous atrium of the West Baden Springs Hotel. This swanky affair includes a lavish three course dinner, silent auction and cocktails. It's all a benefit for the Children's Hospital Foundation raising funds for the Cosair Children's Hospital. This is an important fundraiser for us, the Concorde d'Elegance at French Lick. We're just so grateful to have this relationship with the French Lick team. All the proceeds benefit Cosair Children's Hospital. Uh, specifically this year, it's gonna benefit our Addison Joe Blair Cancer Care Unit, and we're so thrilled to align with this event uh, because it's a wonderful event also for our families. Uh, many of our events are geared towards females and the fact that we have introduced a male demographic in this with cars and lots of cars enthusiasts it's been wonderful and we're grateful to have the opportunity what a perfect end to a perfect day cocktails under the beautiful West Baden Springs dome Sunday's the big day, the day of the actual competition. Most of the cars weren't driven here, but brought in on trailers in the wee hours of the morning. All of these vehicles have been meticulously cared for, primped, and pampered. Vehicles are brought onto the field and arranged in categories. Carolyn's 1972 Jaguar is entered in the Survivor's class. Cars in this category must be original and unrestored. There are 15 different classes of cars in the Concours. These include several Shelby categories, American Performance muscle cars, supercars, post-war era vehicles, and cars made right here in Indiana. There are also categories for trucks and motorcycles. Before the judging begins, entrants make sure all is in tip-top shape. After all, it is a competition of elegance. You're hard at work. <laughs> working hard or hard to be working. The exhibitors we have on the field, I mean, you have to literally love cars. I mean, that's, that's the bottom line. You love your car, you love to show your car, you love to share your experience and the history and and everything about your car with other people and that's that's why people come and show their cars it's because they want to share their car with the public people that may not have a chance to own one or ever see one you come to a concour and you'll see some cars that, that you don't see on the road at all so that's that's the type of person that that comes to a concour to exhibit is someone that wants to share their car the people that we have on the field today, they made it in their schedule to be here at this concourse, at this beautiful venue that I personally don't think you can find a better spot. Really, you're in between two beautiful hotels on a beautiful golf course on a nice sunny day. I mean, you can't get any better than that. Yeah. There are a lot of incredible looking cars here. Let's take a look at some and meet some of the owners. This is a beautiful car. Tell me, what have we got here? This is a 1929 Duesenberg with a Murphy Roadster body on it. It's a J240. It was uh, originally purchased by a uh, very wealthy billionaire uh, paper empire type of guy on the East Coast. Uh, it's got some really cool history as far as the wife that uh, he was married to. It was the last woman to own the Hope Diamond privately. And uh, this car was... Uh, $18,000 in 1929, which was a lot of money at that time. What are some of your favorite features about this car? 
Um, th there's a lot of really, really neat things that, uh, that Duesenberg incorporated into cars. Basically, when you purchase a Duesenberg, you bought the frame, chassis, engine, firewall, and then you would order the body that you wanted. Uh, this is a, a Roadster. Uh, you could have gotten a, a formal chauffeur-driven sedan, uh, a sedan convertible, uh, lots of different choices. And uh, this is sort of unique because um, it, after 1929 styling, it was sent back to another uh, body company called Bowman & Schwartz out in Pasadena, and it was restyled in 1937. And by restyling it, they changed the, the hood line. Most of the hoods stopped here, but they put the length of the hood to the base of the window to create a much more elegant, longer, uh, longer uh, nose for the car. They also designed what's called the disappearing top. This, uh, this cover here hinges up and the convertible top actually hides away underneath there as compared to just sitting there and then being covered up with a piece of uh, canvas or something along those lines. But, uh, but, but the thing about Duesenbergs to me is just the mechanical they, are just, they were just the most powerful, the biggest, the baddest. They had a great straight eight engine in it uh, that uh, had four valves per cylinder in 1929, double overhead camshafts, aluminum cylinder head. Had a, this particular model, which is an SJ, had a supercharger on it. And these cars would do 120 mile an hour in 1929. And one of their, their company uh, advertising things was you'd never be passed by anybody unless they were in another Duesenberg. <laughs> I bought this car probably 15 years ago or so, and I like the color combination. What makes the car special is its drag pack. It's a Super Cobra jet, has an external engine oil cooler. It's externally balanced at different crank rods, pistons, dampener, wrist pins, timing pointer, and uh, the uh, counterweight. And they have Le Mans racing rods. It was more durable in the short end. Plus, it has a 391 or 430 nod to rear end. And this car is a, a four speed, which makes it more desirable with the drag pack. And it's a Ram Air car where the air goes into the scoop there. The uh, car, this, this car won a design styling award because of the uniqueness, because of the, everything in the front end is unique. The fiberglass, it's the only shell with fiberglass fenders, has its own special bumper, aerodynamic pointed style when they started going with aerodynamics more and plus this cools the front brakes the rear brakes cool through here come out here for the rear brakes that's got a built-in spoiler this is fiberglass fiberglass and it's the only year first year that they did this they came out with the euro exhaust like caught the Ferraris there where the exhaust came out of the back in aluminum collector it has sequential tail lights they go blink 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 they, they'll, they'll go in sequence like that when you hit the thatch or so. This is all fiberglass, this is all fiberglass. And that's why the antenna is back here, it's a special antenna, because the other cars had iron fenders and they couldn't ground it, so they had to bring the antenna back here on the quarter panel. And it's the first year for a reflective stripe down the side, it glows at night. So tell me, what have we got here? It's a 1966 Shelby Mustang. Uh, these cars uh, were uh, uh, started by Carroll Shelby in, in response to uh, the new Mustang and uh, Ford Motor wanted to have Mustang uh, show some performance and they went to Carroll Shelby and he built these cars and the 65, 66's were essentially the same cars and then they evolved uh, until the uh, early 70's when the uh, Mustang Shelby w was discontinued. This particular car I purchased in California where I, where I used to live. I since moved to Ohio and uh, uh, brought it back and found some good restores and uh, we finished the car about 14 years ago. Um, and it, uh, it's a color, it's the original color called Ivy Green and uh, we name all of our cars and so this is Ivy the car because of the color and also because that was my grandmother's name and my grandmother was quite a driver. And so uh, we enjoy uh, Ivy, she, she's, we, we show it but yet we drive it. We, we took it on a, a car tour yesterday and uh, we enjoy having the car and driving it and, and, uh, and sharing it. Judging a Concours is a serious and involved affair. Each class has its own judges. Many have been brought in from across the continent for today's competition. The most important thing that you do as a judge is talk to the entrant about his car. There are two reasons for that. One, you learn if 
if it has any historical importance which can factor into your your final decision just just as part of the decision and the other thing is to thank the entrant for bringing his or her car because without those guys there's no show it is a very expensive proposition and time consuming to load up a car and trailer it and drive it sometimes 1200 miles so so it's very important that you make them feel appreciated when we find out what cars are coming to the show, we have to do our homework. We have to make sure that we are knowledgeable about what is correct on these cars. Uh, you have to make sure that the car has not been rebodied. You have to make sure it's got the original engine, the transmission, uh, you know, and, and to what degree that the car has been restored. We, we start out with a 20-line checklist and it covers from A to Z. You know, you start out with uh, the technical aspect of the judging. You know, we make, we make the owners start the car. They all have to be operational. Uh, we check all the lighting. We do all the, the horns, the wipers, make sure everything works. You can't just drag a car in here and expect to be in a Concorde. It has to be functional. It's al almost like getting your car inspected. See, if the lights come on, if... Uh, if you can hear the uh, uh, oil pump crank up when you turn the key, the overall condition is critical, of course. Uh, you, don't, you don't want something out there with dents uh, and, and dirt all over it, so, so that's important. I, and again, there are different degrees. You, you can take that to excess. I've seen people with Q-tips cleaning out their tire treads, which I frankly think is foolish, but that's you know one person's opinion. Uh, you you look at the engine compartment and you look for uh, uh, modern upgrades. In other words, if they've got an electric uh, fan in there, if they've got an oil cooler, if there are things in there that were not original to the car, that takes away from from an overall score. With the judging underway, it's time to begin the official ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Welcome to the 2014 Concours here at the French Lick Resorts. It's my pleasure to be here today as we support Cosair Children's Hospital. Back home again We've got people that have come from Montana, Colorado, California, Texas, you know, 18 different states. People come in just to be at this event. You know, and it's just, it really thrills me because I get to see all these iconic cars and the things that I love, you know, so. The judges have tallied their final scores and are ready to present the winners. The judges had a tough task today. Our first class, ladies and gentlemen, our first winners, the cars of Shelby American, 1965 through 67. The cars of Shelby American, 1967 Shelby GT350 belongs to Bob Gaines from Kansas City, Missouri. And we had an incredible display of Shelby Mustangs. Second place in the cars of Shelby American, 1965 through 1967, Rich McClanahan from Edmond, Oklahoma. All the way from Oklahoma. There's a community uh, in, at, at most shows of people who are there year after year. See, no two shows are ever alike. So if you, you come back to French Lick next year, or if you go to Amelia Island after having gone there, as I did for many years in a row, the show is still going to be different, and they're going to be wonderful things to look at if you're even vaguely interested in cars. And even if you're not interested at all, it's, uh, uh, it's probably like if someone took you to your first air show there would be things there that would fascinate you this is our second place automobile in that class and ladies and gentlemen it is a Duesenberg 1931 model J Durham one of only seven made it belongs to Joe Cassini Joe Cassini congratulations second place in the cars of Indiana class First place, 1929 Stutz, and it is supercharged. One of about 10 Stutzes that were supercharged, only three are known to exist today. British body, right-hand drive, on an American Stutz chassis.
With the Winter Circle celebration now underway, we have reached the end of the Concorde d'Elegance at French Lick. One, two. We hope you've enjoyed spending time with these rare, historic, and fast cars and getting to meet their owners. Soon, most of these fine automobiles will be carefully loaded onto trailers for the long ride home. They'll be transported back to their garages and gently tended to by their owners, who are dedicated to preserving a time when cars were elegant, motoring was a pastime, and the road was a highway to adventure.